This is Terrence Andre Banks coming to you from Information Age Financial Solutions with a fantastic book that I would recommend everyone reads, especially if they have family members who have pensions. It's Who Stole My Pension by Robert Kiyosaki and Edward Seidel. Um, this book was written in 2020, and I've done a number of videos in the past about how important it is to understand the pension crisis that we're facing and we're continuing to face this with all the other things going on in the news now. It's not getting as much press, but this is one of the most important issues of our time is because pensions make up the people who take on pensions and people who receive pensions are a large part of our population it's our grandparents our fathers uh cousins uncles it's a number of people who depend and rely on the pensions and it's extremely important to understand everything you can about it um, this book i i just can't say enough about it um, i've got so many you know, bunny ears here for things that i've actually highlighted and I've just highlighted the book. Um, I'm just going to couple, read you a couple excerpts just to get an idea of this. Uh, I'm just going to take a pick here. Especially from the, the other author who's a forensic um, the forensics actually the best way to explain it is a forensic scientist on, on looking at pensions. Here's one. None of this flagrant waste. Over the course of my career, I've witnessed countless pension bounds boards squander workers' retirement savings on travel entertainment, most only to attend lavish conferences from beaches in Hawaii to golf courses in Scotland. And here's one from the Teamsters, the Teamster truckers. I've done a video on this. Those 34 New York team trucks who had driven decades to earn pension benefits were supposed to accept without explanation that their annual payments would be cut 30 to 50 percent. Their retirement plans would have to be dramatically dramatized. Again, I just I kept highlighting different aspects, and that's probably not the best, but I'm just going through some of the things here uh, that just stuck out to me. Okay. Here's one of a, a, a really good point. The PBGC is what's supposed to be a backstop for when pensions fail. Um, however, they've been having <laughs> budget crisis with their deficits. It's, it's extremely, extremely noticeable to say the least. And they don't have enough money. So let me read a part of this here. However, since the PBGC has projected a deficit of $30 billion in 2019, the notion that the agency is self-financing is laughable. Truth be known, U.S. taxpayers pay the price when private corporations dump their pensions. That's precisely why corporations would rather dump than pump money into their flowing pensions. First, since most taxpayers today generally lack adequate retirement savings of their own, the last thing they'll vote for is to put more of their money to failing government workers' pensions. Some call it pension envy. Second, in light of pension envy, it's political suicide to campaign for greater taxpayer contributions to show up government pensions. No one has hit the pension jackpot quite like sworn officers of the California Highway Patrol, CHP. Of the 1,066 1, fixed-figure retirees, the average pension is $10,192 per month or $122,300 for annually. On top of that, there are 6,350 active employees at CHP averaging $115,000 in pay, with taxpayers chipping in another $48,300 in pension contributions. Therefore, each officer costs 163000 pay and pension cuts alone. Meanwhile, Riverside County has 461 six-figure retirees in the top 12 retirements, each exceeded 200000 per year. Last year, the assistant sheriff made 653000 by cashing in banks of unused benefits. Okay, that's an extreme case. But that's just, an, you know, you're going to have these issues where some people are getting extremely too much for their particular county in that point, which is going to cause a problem. But on the most part, most of them are not receiving that, and they're actually just being taken by the best, for the best pace of Wall Street with, unfortunately, with politicians' blessing. And you'll find out more of that in the book. Uh, here's another example. 1.3 million public sector employees, retirees, including health care workers, correctional officers, sanitation workers, police officers, and child care providers, states that public pensions are modest. Um, most of them, that's what they're saying. Processing, most people receive 19000 per year. At the career public service, that's pretty average for that. Right? Kiyosaki goes to his thing about defined benefits.
Your pension is being mismanaged, gross malpractice generally practiced. <laughs> I first met Dr. Sano in 1993. I was in my early 30s, single living in New York City and the owner of an investment firm on Wall Street. He traded the government, traded tens of millions of dollars in stocks daily. A few years later, the graduate from law school. That's so about his career itself. So. Like Dr. Salmon, based on 35 plus years of experience, I have concluded that gross malpractice generally practiced pervades pension management as well. If you're depending on a pension for your retirement security, you need to fully understand that gross malpractice generally practice means. It means that people responsible overseeing your pension have, without your consent have been entrusted with your retirement savings are utterly lacking relevant financial experience. They either don't know or don't care about what's best for your pension. And these, again, these are your family members, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents that depend on these pensions. And it's just, it's outstanding to see, I should say it's outstanding, it's staggering to see what, what they're doing with them. Here's another part. The people overseeing your pension lack investment experience. In the United States, the combined value of pension plan assets held by state and local governments in 2018 was over $4 trillion. These pensions are overseen by boards of trustees comprised of laymen and women who generally lack any knowledge or expertise in investment matters. There are a few state and local laws which require one or more board members of public pensions to possess some financial experience, but such requirements are extremely rare. Typically, public pensions boards include some individuals such as active or retired teachers, cops, firefighters, and sanitation workers who are supposed to, and in my experience rarely do, represent the interests of workers and pensioners. Other board members are appointed by politicians such as governments and mayors who are supposed to, and in my experience, rarely do, represent the interests of voters, ta aka taxpayers. Again, typically none of the worker or political representatives know anything about investing, yet they decide how trillions of public pensions are invested. And this is coming from somebody who's a forensic scientist who looks and studies when pensions actually fail. They hire him to do this. A recent study of U.S. public pension concluded that oversight of these funds is vitally important to government officials, plan participants, and taxpayers. The effectiveness of pension boards depends on the structure, composition, size, and member tenure. Most important, better board compositions associated with a higher tenure investment return of fund assets. Hardly surprising. Yeah, of course, that would be the case. Look at this. This is a part here that said that a middleman. In 2016, the former chief executive of pension was sentenced to a prison term of 4.5 years after pleading guilty to conspiracy charge for taking more than 250000 in cash and other bribes from this friend and, and former CalPERS board member, Alfred Villabos. Prosecutors said Villabos, who killed himself weeks before he was due to stand trial, reported made $50 million as a middleman for investment firms looking to get a price piece of Cowper's business. It just shows you the, the constant greed and the shadow banking, the shadow things that's going on. Kids are going to Your pension overseas think they're smarter than Warren Buffett, and they're not. In case you've been living on the rock for your entire life, Warren Buffett, the chairman and CEO, what he said. Over the years, Buffett has had a lot to say about how corporate and government pensions should be prudently managed. If the pensions ignore Buffett's advice, it would have to become because it would have to be because they believe they are smarter than Buffett, right? Well, they're not. Typically, corporate. I'm sorry, I kind of jumbled that up. Typically, corporate shareholders and public pension stakeholders, taxpayers, and government workers pay the price when pensions ignore the best advice and choose instead to follow the herd, i.e. gross malpractice generally practiced. Uh, so what advice has Oracle of Omaha? So what advice has the Oracle of Omaha had to offer to pensions? Buffett has been outspoken critic of pension accounting practices in the United States, and particularly the investment returns corporate and government pensions assume they're earned on their investments. For example, in an off cited 2007 annual letter to Berkshire Hathaway, stakeholders Buff noted corporate pensions are, on average, assumed they will earn a 8% a year, while, says Buffett, 6% would be more realistic. 
Buffett also knows that the some companies have pension plans in Europe as well as the United States, and the accounting almost also all assume that U.S. plans will earn more than the non-U.S. plan. The discrepancy is puzzling. Why should these companies not put their U.S. managers in charge of the non-U.S. pension assets and let them work their managing these assets as well? I've never seen that this puzzling question explained, but the auditors and actuaries who are charged with betting the return assumptions seem to have no problem with it. More than often not, American state and local pensions projected rates of returns have proven to be over, overly optimistic. For example, from 2000-2018, state pensions collectively returned just 5.87%, badly trailing their own 7.75% return assumption over the same time frame. Wall Street's solution to every vested problem is and will always be to pay us more in fees. It's a lot of money is going to fees. Mary's question being ignore Buffett and experts' advice, resulting in hundreds of billions of foreseeable and indeed, indeed foreseen hedge fund losses. In fact, every forensic <laughs> here's one more point. You might think that underfunded pensions struggling to pay benefits would heed Buffett's advice and seek to cut the fees they pay Wall Street, embrace austerity, tighten their belts, trim the fat. In fact, if every forensic investigation I've ever undertaken has exposed that the nearer a pension is to insolvency, the higher the fees and the greater the risk the pension takes on. I'm going to repeat that again. In fact, every forensic investigation I've ever undertaken has exposed that, near, that the nearer a pension is to insolvency, the higher the fees and the greater the risk the pension takes on. It's just insane. Desperate measures, hail measures, are resorted to a desperate times. What are pensions doing globally? The exact opposite of what Warren Buffett has to told them to do. With predictably, with predictably disastrous results. To protect your retirement security, you need to regularly remind the people managing your position, pension to follow expert advice and, and give up trying to outsmart the people like Buffett. It's just amazing. A lot of foreigners are coming and looked at American pensions as the bank benchmark. <sighs> mm, look at this. Documentary filmmaker Gress C. Scrinsbrand needed to talk to an expert who was knowledgeable about Wall Street secrets, but not bound to keep those secrets that, that led him to. I told him on camera, today the velvet throated hucksters of Wall Street are saying, give us your money, let us manage it in secret, and this will be the best thing that ever happened to you. You should never have the blind trust in Wall Street money managers. The secrecy breeds corruption, and corruption results in lower investment returns. So argument that the money, more security increases investment returns, ultimately will fail. The Dutch workers should wake up and realize that their retirement safety is at risk. You should never have blind trust in Wall Street money managers. I mean, I'm just touching the surface here. Guys. Why you need to know about the pension about the investment fees your pension pays. It's a good chapter here, chapter 16. Passive index investment managers can be purchased by pensions for one basis point or one hundredth of a percent or even for free. Active managers who intend to beat the market by stock picking may charge pensions fees that are 120 times greater than 1.2 percent. Oh, greater, I'm sorry. The basis point is one one hundredth of a percent. Active management who are trying to beat the market charge 120 times greater, 1.2%. Alternative investment managers include hedge, venture, and private equity may charge asset-based performance and other multiple layers of fees amounting to approximately 9%, 900 times greater fees than indexing. Paying higher fees for active traditional alternative investment management service does not guarantee and in fact negatively correlates to superior investment performance. Indeed, the overwhelming majority of active managers fail to outperform market indexes over time net of fees. The higher the fees, the greater the drag on investment returns. Forget the old adage, you get what you pay for. When it comes to investing, almost always, the more you pay, the less you get when you're dealing with pensions. A 2000 report by the Maryland Public, Punct Public Policy Institute and the Maryland Tax Exchange Foundation, which examined the investment fees, investment performance of U.S. state pensions, Funds concluded, state pension funds, including Maryland, have succumbed for four years to a popular Wall Street sales pitch. Active money managers beats the market. As a result, almost all state pension funds 
use outside managers to select, buy, and sell investments for pension funds for a fee. The actual result, a typical Wall Street man manager underperforms relative to passive indexing is costly to both taxpayers and public sector employees. For example, the top 10 states in terms of Wall Street fees had a lower pension fund investment performance over the last five fiscal years than the bottom 10 states. State pension funds should consider indexing. Indexing funds cost the state pension funds about three basis points yearly on invested capital versus 39 basis, basis points for active money managers fees or 92% less. By indexing, most, by indexing most of the portfolios we conclude that 46 states funds surveyed could save six billion in fees annually. That's just amazing. Man. I can't encourage enough to read this book. I've done so many videos before about just different articles about state pensions, but this book, Who Stole My Pension? by Edward Seto and Robert Kiyosaki. And Edward Seto, just given his back, was a former SEC's attorney and America's leading expert in pension looting and his authority on debunking benefits pension plans for teachers, firefighters, police officers, and those in public service and in the military. Uh, toxic access, he talks about that. Kiyosaki goes into different things in that, that point. Whom saw my pension is an in-depth assessment of the pension crisis that the world is facing today, the mismanagement and systemic corruption that caused it, and what tens of millions around the world, employees who expected to have pension income at retirement, can do about it. In the decades to come, we will witness hundreds of millions of elders worldwide including American, many American baby boomers slipping into poverty. Too frail to work and too poor to retire has become the new normal. The, the looming global pension crisis does affect, doesn't affect only active workers and retirees. Entire families, young and old, will bear the financial burdens of an aging world population. That's just from the back here. But I just read you a bunch of different excerpts from the from before. Worth your time to get. Pick up this book, Who Stole My Pension? by Robert Kiyosaki and Edward Siegel. This video has been any value to you. Please subscribe, leave some comments, hit the like button, share this video. Until my next video, I'm out.